won't start. Oh, hi there, Kate. Uh -huh. Let's see if we can get, uh, there we go. Can you see the moon? Make sure we got this centered. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I wondered, <clears throat> Oh, wait. <laughs> no, that was, that was a pre-comment. Okay, um, it's gonna take me some finesse to get it centered, I think. Alright, I have a moon filter on, but, uh, it seems like it's too bright to see the Pleiades. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to or not in this telescope. Um, let's see if I can see it with my naked eye. Since it's the moon is half full right now, it's kind of bright, so it might be too bright to see the Pleiades. Oh wait, I think I can see it. All the dogs. All right. So from here, it looks like it's not quite at the Pleiades. I think I can see a car. Well, let me see if I can show you the Pleiades in the telescope. I go over a little bit. It's pretty dark. Hmm. I've seen the Pleiades in my telescope before. Um, let's see here. I'll go back to the moon. All right, there's the moon, and, oh, I can zoom in, sweet. <laughs> See some of the craters, oops, how do I zoom in slower? That's an incredible amount of zoom, maybe I gotta do it like this. Huh? No? Okay, if you look closely, you can see the moon is barely moving, little by little. I think it moves about the width of the moon distance every hour or so. Um, I'm pretty sure it's like right on top of the Pleiades right now, so it must be too bright to see the stars. even with my moon filter on. Let's see if it'll focus. Hmm. Kind of blurry. Usually it helps if it's in the center of the telescope here. 
I don't have fine-tuning controls to adjust the, adjust the telescope, so I have to move it manually with my hands. It gets, gets a little bumpy. Hmm. There you go. How's that quality? I want to try and zoom in, but for some reason, I can only zoom in in the middle, I guess. So that's the moon. Um, some other things you can see out tonight. Actually, it's very clear skies where I am. We have Orion and the Orion Nebula. Mars is up. Um, and Jupiter. We could check out Jupiter and the four Galilean moons if you wanted. Um, Venus is up right now. Very bright over in the southeast. Uh, eastward. And uh, what else could we see? What's the name of the moon craters? Um, well, the craters themselves, I think, are just craters. They do each have... Some of them might be named, but I know what I, what is more interesting is the uh, dark spots. Those have a name too. They're not craters, but they're, I think, like Maria, basically lunar seas, whatever the, the Greek word is for, or not Greek, Latin, probably. Something like that. So that's what the dark spots are. But um, craters you can see best by the Terminator, that line in, where the shadow meets daytime. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe if I zoom in a little more, you can see some craters there. Uh, gotta refocus. The moon keeps moving. <laughs> Oops, wrong way. Come on, moon. It's tricky when it's directly overhead. That's better. There you go. How's that view? That's pretty cool. You can see you can see a lot of craters there. Yeah, I I prefer to view the moon through a telescope when it's kind of like this, when it's a gibbous or a crescent, because that terminator line, that shadow line really highlights the craters on a full moon it's it's just so bright that sometimes it's hard to see details um but yeah those i don't i don't know if they have another name besides just lunar craters or craters and yeah now while we're here, we'll see. Uh, it looks like we won't be able to see the Pleiades. It's just too bright. But I can move over to, s to Jupiter and see if we can see the Galilean moons. So let's try that real quick. Jupiter. Nice. So you can see just a little bit two of the two of the moons, maybe three. Do you see a third on the right? Far right. It's kind of hard to see them when they get close to Jupiter. Because Jupiter's so bright. And my camera's a hard time focusing on that. <laughs> Let me try moving it. It is better if it's in the center. All right, well. Just my finder scope. I think I bumped it. I 
That's a little better. Okay, I'm gonna try one more time for the Pleiades. I swear I can see him right here. See anything? Hmm. Nope, not really. I think the moon's too bright. <laughs> yeah, you can see some at ten and ten and twelve. Or ten and the moons are probably at like straight across from each other. Um can't remember, but moved it now, so it's too late. Um, let's see. And then the last thing we can try while I'm out here, it's always fun to see. You can barely see it here. Okay. Nope. Try that. Um, okay, so I see some stars. Those are stars in the Orion's belt. If we center it. Hmm, it's not very clear. Let's see, can you tell? Hmm. No, you can't really see the smudge. Maybe I'm not quite at the right spot. But that's part of Ryan's belt. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right. Well, there we go. There's a few things. I think I'll wrap it up there. So, thanks for joining me. And, uh... Yeah. Awesome. Orion. I thought Orion was in the summertime. Um, no, Orion is a win winter constellation. Uh, it's opposite of Scorpio, which is a summer constellation. They're kind of like directly opposite from each other. So when you, you can see Orion, you can't see Scorpio and vice versa. Um, but in fact, winter is a great time to go stargazing because that's when you can see Orion and when you can see like uh, the Pleiades and Sirius, the brightest star in the, in the northern hemisphere, um, and Taurus, which has the Pleiades. So um, yeah, winter is a great time to star stargaze. There's some cool constellations up. Anyway, good question. Okay. Thank you. We'll end it there. Have a good night, everyone. Slash mom and other person, whoever, whoever is there. Good times.